Well, welcome to this episode. And today we're going to talk about our indicators of compromise and responding to threats. So if you're aware in the previous videos, we kind of looked at across a different range of threat intelligence to gather da gathering data. Um, we did a walkthrough of the MITRE framework. In today's quick session, I want to run through, well, how do we respond to these? Uh, what's the sort of the graphical side of things that we can start to look at? The first part of, of obviously finding IOCs and what do we do once we define how we respond to them? Uh, well, the first part is, again, we look at our, our indicators of compromise, right? So these could be through a range of means of what we've discussed previously. We've discussed IP addresses, um, domain names, We've got maybe URLs, there's hashes, and there's a range of potential breadcrumbs. Um, I'm just going to put breadcrumbs here. Uh, a potential reason of breadcrumbs through, well, after an attack, these are sort of the little evidence that kind of come into play, right? And for us, once we've identified these, these are the tens of clues that something is probably going on in the environment. And then from there, once we have our IOCs of something potentially going wrong, well, where do we typically find these? And we kind of find them, find them through logs, right? We've got our system logs. We've got our network logs. We've got probably our firewall logs. Uh, and these are ways that we're going to track and monitor and view and obviously find, uh, find our ISCs. And then we've got our response and how we respond to them. And a couple of things that we can do to respond to our indicators of compromise. Uh, obviously, if we've got our SIEM, so we've got some sort of event logging, event monitoring, SOAR platform that we can then, you know, if there is a, a notification of some sort of an alert, then someone gets an alert, there's an investigation that happened, and then we'll go away and we triage and respond to those specific threats or indicators of compromise. Uh, again, should be implemented in many environments. It's kind of picking up off the ground currently. We're in 2023, there's a lot of organizations implementing SIEM platforms and still ongoing with their DLPs and SOAR platform optimizations and stuff like that. Again, there's not a lot of organizations that currently have SIEM platforms, um, which obviously is a little bit more alarming. So, and that kind of brings us onto the next part of our response. And that is through training, right? We've got to go away and we've got to build scenarios, right? And that comes through, you know, tabletop exercises, um, scenario building. And these are very specific things like we started talking about our threat emulation, right? When we look at the MITRE framework, there's probably a bunch of controls around maybe persistence or recon or initial access, and what are the different types of areas of each of these things? So once we start defining these within our environment, we would have playbooks around how we would deal with these kinds of attacks. And that's what we wanna to get to. We wanna to tabletop these with parts of the organization as well. We've got our senior leadership team. So execs to internal stakeholders, I was gonna put ISH for internal stakeholders. So we might have certain business units maybe key contracting teams, maybe the head of departments, uh, et cetera. And then you'll have obviously our technology teams and security and then other divisions and so on. So when we tabletop these with key personnel, maybe there's a division of a certain department that owns the application of some sort that you we may have underwriters if we're in a financial or if we're in a... Um, in a in, insurance yeah trying to determine what that word was and uh, if you're in an in insurer um an insurance platform or an insurance organization the then you have an underwriting department now chances are certain departments may be data owners of maybe that data platform or that you know application of some sort so then you may need to tabletop with those stakeholders and say hey this application is either outdated for some reason and they don't want to update that platform, well, then we need to tabletop and understand, well, what are the potential indicators of compromise that could be affecting this application, uh, the underlying data to it? And then what are potential triggers then that could impact data, financial loss, uh, customer reputation, and the list goes on, right? So we need to tabletop and define these with scenario building, scenario building um, to define 
you know, what are those controls? What do they look like? What do we do? But then getting buy-in from the rest of the, the business as well. Um, and then the last bit here is I'm just going to put in a little piece here for uh, calculated measures. And I'm just going to clear the screen up a little bit just as we sort of continue to talk about this. And let me just talk. There we go. So just clean that up a little bit. So calculated measures, and this is our response. So how do we then respond in a calculated and you know efficient manner? And that's all about our response. So each control will have its own very specific measure on how we remediate, how we mitigate, and how we support that ongoing if it occurs again, right, through lessons learned. So when we start talking about calculated measures, a response may be that if a server, uh, we've got a server over here, and this may be on our DMZ, or maybe somewhere that's hosting some sort of information, we don't know what it is, just going to use it as an example. Um, and let's just say maybe that there's an indicator of compromise that a specific URL uh, has been basically launched from this machine. Now, someone has either clicked something or a something has been installed, and now we're visiting a URL called, you know, um, whatever, www.com.au. Now, the first thing that we'd probably want to do is, are we going to then disconnect this machine entirely? Now, if this machine is hosting email functions, or if it's, five, um, if it's hosting maybe DNS information, you know, and we go and turn that off, well, firstly, well, what's the impact that's going to happen to the business? And this is what where we start talking about defining these parameters with all the business units. So we need to come up with a bunch of scenarios that are going to be targeting our core infrastructure. Now, if this machine is on a Windows XP machine uh, or if it's hosted on a Windows Server 2003, which may impose significant vulnerabilities, then we need to role play what, what the importance of this is, right? So the first part that it, that we'll do is if there's a malicious link, if we're talking about a, an indicator of compromise specifically with a URL, well, first thing that I would go do is maybe investigate this URL, right? So part one would be investigate URL. Now, is this a malicious URL? Chances are it's probably a burnt domain. Maybe if the threat actor group has gone away and they've created a boatload of, of domain names and URLs and this one's probably trashed and burnt, Maybe it's abandoned, it's not currently used, um, or maybe it's being used for something else as a, maybe a parking parking domain of some sort, or who knows what it is, right? So defining that, you know, let's investigate that URL and probably run it through a bunch of, um, as you said in the pre in the probably the first video of this course of threat management, the the tool sets that we've seen in the first part when we ran through OSIN, right? There's indicators of compromising. Um, sites that we can go into, put in the URL, and it will tell us if the site has been used for any malicious activity, give us a score rating, maybe give us a threat profile based on if there's a specific APT that's using it. We want to cycle through the malicious URL, the domain, and basically define where is this attack coming from, right? And then is this going to be now uh, a threat? Is this now going to be turned into a threat indicator? And if so, uh, what's next? So again, maybe the URL is it's parked, it's not currently used, it's abandoned, right? We don't know. So define what that is. And then we may have to investigate the server. Right? Maybe there's some sort of isolation that we need to take place, which is one thing. So isolate the server. And then we may need to isolate, or maybe the server is on its own private VLAN, which is great. Maybe we then need to move it over into another black hole a black VLAN for investigation, or maybe we've got another certain process that we need to define, right? What is that process or maybe that policy that we need to be tied into or that procedure, right? And this falls into, let me just clean that up a little bit because it's very confusing to type and write at the same time uh, and talk. Uh, so the other one there is procedure. Now, if we've got a certain procedure that an indicator of compromise based on a URL. So we've got a dub, 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 and we're going out to a malicious URL. 
Now, a process for us may be, okay, well, the first thing is that we're going to isolate this server. And then second part is we're going to conduct, you know, we're going to put some bit of software on there that's going to tell us how, you know, it's going to give us a threat, um, a threat assessment, and it's going to tell us X, Y, Z has happened. And, you know, it's one, it's gone into registry and registry file keys were, you know, updated. And two, call out to specific URL happened. And then three, file download so we we'll then need to go away and, and investigate what actually happened or what caused that machine to make that certain call out to that malicious URL. So that all then ties into our policies, our procedures and documentation internally with our leadership team and across the business, because then we need to define what's the, what's the acceptable appetite across the organization on how we handle if this is a, an O3 server. And if we've got 15 of these across the environment, which hand side, this is going to apply to all of those. And if they're all housing critical information, well, then there's certain things that need to come into play with that. So the business itself, the business units, different departments, different organizations that may be having access to, to log into this for whatever reason, all the services that, that this machine is potentially supplying, um, we need to handle that. Right. So another part of here is if we're going to investigate the server, well, what are some immediate controls, right? So we need to block the traffic. So if we've got some sort of controls that we now have gone back and said, yes, this is a malicious URL and it is malicious, well, chances are we may be using some sort of business email compromise solution uh, at the edge, like that handles all our emails that are coming in and out. And it's obviously filtering that out so we have to put a you know a specific uh rules that says you know block traffic that's going to xyz url there may be our ips or ids solution that we need to sort of update our firewalls you know all those kinds of things at the edge of the perimeter of the the organization that we have to put in a control that says block any traffic that's potentially going to this malicious url and then obviously we'll go away we'll investigate the process investigate what happens and this kind of, you know, as you're kind of putting pieces together, this ultimately falls through our threat management framework, right? Now, if we take the diamond model approach that we kind of looked at in the last video, remember our diamond analysis, common intrusion analysis model? This is the same thing, right? So if we go victim and we have our capabilities and then our infrastructure, and then adversary, we can then pin this out and, and start sort of defining this, right? So the victim may be, you know, a 2003 web server malicious URL. Fantastic. So that's the victim. It's our web server and that's now having a malicious URL. That's potentially an indicator of compromise. Well, what are the capabilities associated with this? Now, is that making some sort of call out? Is it doing some sort of functioning? Is it installing registry stuff that are altering our boot processes or startup files? Or is it in then installing something else to do something? What are the capabilities? Again, what are the indicators of compromise associated with, with this piece of you know, uh, instance that's occurring? Right from there, we tidy along to our infrastructure. We look at holistically infrastructure across the organization and say, well, where are we labeling this and where are we seeing the remaining infrastructure across our organization? Now, again, if we're using Server 2003 that's hosting it and we've got 15 of these in, in our environment, well, chances are it's going to affect or potentially impact those 15 servers. Now, if it's known to also communicate with Windows Server 2008, if that's still running in the environment, could that potentially also be an indicator of compromise that one part one may be, you know, compromise a Windows Server 2003 and the other part may be pivot to a Windows Server 2008 and replicate the same thing. Whatever that is, you can start playbooking these scenarios out. And then ultimately you define the adversary once we're talking about specifically the dominant intrusion analysis model. Uh, and then are there certain APTs or adversaries that are using these tool sets? So that's how you then profile that out. So from there, you may have, and this is what we always encourage organizations to have, a playbooks. And you will have a playbook for different scenarios across the organization. You may have a playbook for unauthorized access. And you define what unauthorized access looks like to details, right? From a response to responsibilities, to processes and procedures. You may have one for malware. Now, if you're running a pure Linux-bred environment or if you're running Mac or Apple Mac, 
well, chances are this may not apply to you, right? Maybe it's just targeting Windows and then you don't need to worry about that. So our focus should now be on specific operating systems or specific versions within our operating systems with, with launching malware. So then you'll have a playbook with malware and then you could have several playbooks in here that define different playbooks in the industry or different APTs in the industry that have or are associated with specific malware that tie to your organization. Then you have a playbook that defines how you intend to respond and react and remediate in that specific incident. Uh, another playbook could be something with phishing, right? So again, going back to our recon methodology through spear phishing, through drive-by attacks, you know, how do we define phishing and how do we respond to that? And then again, you can have multiple scenarios based on phishing attacks. How do we train our users from training to remediation, to additional support and mentoring. So if a certain user continuously clicks on that link, no matter how much training he or she goes through, well then how much more support can we give that person and, and educate and train them? So positive reinforcements, additional report, but then everything gets defined in these playbooks and, and the playbooks can have a whole, you know, it could be 20, 30 pages. It could be a few pages and a minimalistic approach as well is, is quite healthy. And then you have a workflow that says start and then trigger and then here and there. And then ultimately you get to the point where it says end and that's how we remediate and resolve, you know, if it is unauthorized access, if it's a malware incident, if it's phishing, if it's denial of service. So maybe our denial of service playbook that stipulates that our external perimeter is highly susceptible to denial of service because it just needs to be public. Well, then what controls and what measures are we putting in place to remediate against denial of service attacks or distributed denial of service attacks? And then you're going to have a playbook that defines all those different characteristics around how the organization intends to support, remediate, and keep, and keep the enablement happening and obviously the availability of those services as well. So that's kind of it in a nutshell when we start talking a little bit about um, – our response and our indicators of compromise. We looked at uh, our response triangle specifically around indicators of compromise uh, and then building out playbooks that help us reflect and keep up to date with these malicious activities. I hope this video has been useful and thank you for viewing. Again, if there are any other comments or videos that you'd like to see, please let me know. And I'll see you in the next video.